Hi, everyone. A uh, reminder of a couple of very quick housekeeping items. Please keep yourself on mute. If you don't mind, go ahead and add your affiliation as well next to your name on your Zoom ID. Uh, as always, if you need record permission, Arnie is with us. Uh, let him know. We'll take care of that. And if you have a question, please use the virtual raised hand button and we'll make sure you're part of the Q&A here in just a bit. Well, with just two races remaining in the NTT IndyCar Series season, uh, the first one comes up this coming Sunday, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back, uh, weekends for the NTT IndyCar Series schedule right now. It's the BitNile.com Grand Prix of Portland this coming Sunday. And just over an hour ago, Ray Hill led him in Lanigan Racing uh, with the announcement that driver Yuri Vips will be making his IndyCar Series debut when he'll drive the number 30 Honda-powered Delara for the team. Vips made his uh, way through the Formula Series overseas and recently had a couple of tastes of IndyCar with a test for the team at Sebring last October and then once again at Barber Motorsports Park last March. The 22-year-old, their 23-year-old from Estonia joins us uh, this afternoon, as does co-owner Bobby Rahal. Thanks, guys, first of all. Bobby, we'll start with you. I know you've had a couple looks at Yuri. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think about this young man? Well, I think Yuri's a, um, a, just a very nice uh, young guy. You know, we were introduced to him a couple years ago. Uh, you know, um, I mean, it's no secret uh, uh, that um, uh, he uh, made a mistake and, and that uh, and, and paid a huge price. But people in Europe who I knew were very, very complimentary about him as a driver and as a person. You know, that this mistake was a single mistake. And, you know, unfortunate, uh, as we all know, Yuri paid a huge price for that. Um, and uh, and lost his position in the uh, Red Bull uh, system, which he was the preeminent uh, junior driver uh, at the time. And um, in fact, it's kind of interesting that his younger his partner, who was just who was with him at the time, Liam Lawson, just just drove uh, the uh, Alpha Tara, uh, the uh, you know the uh, the Red Bull B team uh, at uh, the Dutch Grand Prix. So that's kind of interesting, but. Um, but I, I got to meet uh, uh, Yuri, um, a person I respect a great deal in Europe, um, gave him uh, a great, you know, from a driving standpoint, gave him a great, um, uh, gave me a great uh, 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 evaluation of him. And we thought it, was, it would be worth giving him a shot. So he did a test for us at Sebring in 20. 21, I believe it was, uh, and then, um, and then, of course, also at Barber uh, this last year. Um, you know, I think for us, um, I think, uh, you know, uh, I guess I'm, uh, you know, as I said, Yuri um, is a good person and um, made a huge mistake. Um, is has really, I think, atoned for it by through some of the. Uh, programs, uh, diversity training programs that he's been involved with both in England and, and here in the United States. In fact, the same uh, the same organization that um, that Kyle Larson went to, and we felt that uh, they, they were very good uh, in their field. And Yuri's been going through that program, I think has completed it now. Um, and um, so, uh, as I said, I think Yuri, for many years, Yuri's known he made a big mistake and he's uh, and he paid for it, but now he's uh, trying to come back. And um, so we're pleased to give him that second chance, I think. You know, he he's shown us enough that for us to take that chance, you know, to give him a shot. And he, he certainly worked hard to correct um, the mistakes that, mistake that he made. And so we're, uh, we're excited about him joining the team for these last two races. And um, hopefully he'll be uh, – uh, he'll, hopefully he'll do well. <laughs> no pressure, Yuri, right? <laughs> No pressure. <laughs> uh, Yuri, uh, welcome to the NTT IndyCar Series. Your thoughts on on joining a team that has a lot of uh, great history and certainly a win this year, Rahel Letterman Lanigan Racing, and certainly not wasting any time with your first race in just six days, but uh, just getting a shot, getting back in the car, it's going to be uh, special for you, I'm sure. Exactly. Um, so I've been out of the car for, for a while. Um, I just did a test this year uh, back in March in barber so um there's been like a lot of anticipation um you know for this event but uh you know to finally get back in the car but just honestly really grateful really grateful for the opportunity um that bobby and 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 team rejo has 
has given me and um yeah just um overwhelmed overwhelmed with emotion at the moment yeah understandable for sure let's uh go ahead and and open it up for questions again if you have a question uh hit the virtual raise hand button and we'll make sure you're part of this q a and let's go ahead and begin with uh, ben johnson from the paddock i hey ben Hey Dave, how are you doing? Good man. Hey Bobby, um, congratulations on today's news. It's it's fantastic. Um, Thank you. you guys, you guys are kind of on a bit of momentum, you know, with Christian having won this season, um, and Graham did really well at the Indy GP. Um, what do you put that down to? Is that the the reshuffle that you've done, or? Well, I think um, uh, you know, I would first off uh, and thank you. But I, I think we've still got ways to go on the ovals as we saw again this past weekend um i mean we were we were okay but you got to be a lot better than okay to, to win uh on the ovals uh so we have our work to do but on the road course um you know i think uh, for example at indy gp well you know a couple of years ago uh when uh, when we did the one-off race with christian he was i think fourth on the grid almost put it on pole and so we've kind of always had a good feel for that circuit and and things we learned there um certainly um you know you, you looked at toronto of course that was a great victory for christian a great race for us and then uh indy gp again having the front row uh that was pretty special graham really drove a fantastic race did everything he could to win and just was unlucky with the, the early yellow that seemed to take forever to, to you know to end and um and uh you know rewarded others but um so i think on the road racing side and street racing side we've been uh, I guess closer to where we needed to be, and and uh, that made that that jump maybe um, uh, maybe we're three quarters of the way there. I think it, it's certainly come together a little bit more this year. Um, we're we're certainly looking forward to to um, uh, to Portland and Laguna because we think they're going to be a lot like well last year we were good at, at Portland. Graham finished fifth in the yeah. race. You know Christian was running first or second in a lot of that race, so he made a little mistake. Um, so we're really looking forward to that. And, and of course, we're going to continue to try to improve ourselves on, on, the, on the road courses and the street courses. But for us, our, our major effort over the course, well, since May, in my what I called the Indy recovery plan was to figure out, to put us back on the front row at Indy. Um, you know, as I said, it's hard to believe this year it would have been hard to believe that we won that race two years earlier. And um, so, um, yeah, a lot of work to do yet, but we're, you're, you know, we're getting there slowly but surely. Excellent. And obviously bringing Yuri in as part of that, you know, he's he's obviously done well in, in Europe. Um, what do you think he's going to bring to the team both this weekend and then at Laguna next week? Well, I, I know that, you know, he and Christian uh, raced together uh, uh, for a number of years and there's a good relationship there. Um, um, you know, we're obviously we're looking to uh, – field the strongest drivers that we can find and um you know with graham we have got a wily veteran who's shown he can run up front you know uh, on the front row now two of the races this year mid ohio and of course uh, indy christian we got youth still um you know still uh learning i mean it's, you know he's just he's still a little wet behind the ears as we would say over here and of course now with yuri <laughs> uh you know he's getting thrown into the deep end a bit but uh, I have confidence in him and um, and he's going he's going to be lucky because he's going to have two great teammates that can help, you know, ease that transition. So um, it's all about our future. And we've asked Yuri to participate in these races, uh, you know, because we, we think that that highly of him. Excellent. Um, thanks very much, Bobby. And for yourself, mm -hmm. Yuri, um, obviously you're going into a team who have great experience with with Graham and with. Christian, what do you expect to learn from the guys over the next couple of weeks? A lot, uh, to be honest. It's a, the cars, essentially, they're quite similar downforce, um, quite similar on horsepower than F2, which I have like decent, a decent amount of experience in. But there's, there's so many differences. It's a completely different racing series. Um, I've also already learned quite a lot. You know, I've gone to a couple of races. I've been around the factory a bit. Um, so I feel like pretty integrated in the team as much as I could be. Um, and definitely Christian and Graham have, have helped me with that, that transition phase. And um, I'm sure I'll learn a lot during the race weekend, um, you know, but 
definitely having driven the car, having spent a bit of time here in the US has, has helped me with that transition transition because it is a completely different racing series um, to F2, uh, completely different demands. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Excellent. Well, best luck this weekend and best luck again in Laguna. Thank you. Cheers, Dave. Thanks, Ben. Uh, let's go Eric Smith and then Marshall Pruitt after that. Eric Smith, race review online. Go ahead, Eric. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Um, first question for Bobby. How much of the, this announcement for today comes down to timing um, of the next two tracks coming up? I know, obviously, you probably didn't want to send Yuri on an oval for his first start, but was this something you've had maybe in the works for uh, for the last week or so? And um, is this more of a, a timing of the two tracks coming up for this announcement now? Well, I think it's um, there's a couple of things about these next two events. Uh, one that I think is uh, a, a real value to us is the series test at Laguna Seca on Thursday, you know, before the race. And um, so it's more than just um, getting time at the two events themselves, but it's getting a full day at Laguna in, in advance of the race. So I think the amount of um, knowledge and comfort and everything that a driver needs to do his best. I think that is going to help that uh, process a lot. I think, I think Portland, you know, that's going to be a challenge. Uh, there's no question about it because you don't have that many, that much practice time before you go into qualifying. And as we all know, qualifying is so intense and so close. Um, I mean, you don't have to be far off the pace and you could be in the last third of the grid. So uh, I do think there's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, demands uh, this coming weekend, but um, but having the two races weekend to weekend, having the test day, uh, to me, all of that made it seem make a lot of sense. And, you know, um, and of course, Yuri's from the road racing background. So he's not, going to an oval, would have, especially like an oval like St. Louis, uh, would have been really, uh, uh, I think, an unbelievable experience never having done one before. And, uh, and I, but I would also say that I thought we, you know, I thought Connor did a super job for us this last weekend, and and um, uh, and I really, you know, was very appreciative of his efforts. Um, uh, you know, real pro. So, you know, when we had three races to go, we just felt that that was the best solution to those those three races. Yeah, and um, you mentioned a couple of years ago with uh, Christian, you got a tip from over there overseas. Got a phone mm -hmm. call about taking a look at him. What led Yuri to you? Um, this this route is this right what, well, what do you see uh, as I, yeah as, as i said um uh i was uh, i yuri came up on our radar screen uh by a friend of mine in in europe and um of course this was after um you know after the mistake that he made after it was public after he was released from his red bull contract so he was um he was you know kind of uh, although he did, and you know, the team that he drove for uh, knew him well, and they they certainly um, they certainly believed that you know, yes, it was a mistake, but that was not emblematic of of him as a person, and um, and, and they still ran him the remainder of that year. Uh, that was the high tech team, <clears throat> but um, anyway, I, I spoke to um, some friends uh, that had worked with Yuri and. Uh, they, they were just very unbelievably, um, impressed and supportive of them, uh, with his skills and, um, uh, you know, knowing that, and, you know, I know that, as I said earlier, also, you know, Yuri had already, um, had already been gone through diversity training in London, um, with, uh, Dr. Letitia Osborne and, um, and, you know, I think he knew there was a lot more to do beyond that even, but, um, you know, we felt that, you know, certainly all the, all the, all the response we were getting from people who'd been with him was very positive. Um, obviously sad that he made a mistake of this, of this nature, but, and paid a huge price for it, I might add. Uh, but was more than half, you know, was impressed because he set about correcting that, uh, and, um, and, and learning, uh, from that and uh, it continues to this day. So, uh, you know, the, as I said, the opinions that I got about him as a driver were extremely high and um, he did do that test for us and we were right, quite pleased with it at Sebring. Um, so, um, uh, you know, we thought we 
you know, I guess I, I personally feel, and I think Mike Lanigan, our team feels uh, that, um, you know, everybody makes mistakes and you have to, you have to do what you can to repair and learn from those mistakes, but everybody deserves a second chance. I certainly feel strongly about that. And so that's why he's here. Thanks, Bobby. And you're, I'm just curious, you, you mentioned this is your first race in, in over a year. Is this, what's your nerves level like coming to a series as, as challenging as IndyCar, but also I'm assuming it's got to be pretty exciting too to, to join a field of this, uh, this strength. To be honest, um, I haven't, maybe once I get there, I'll start feeling them. But at the moment there is like almost no, there's excitement obviously because I just haven't been in a car for so long and I haven't raced for so long, but nerves like almost zero at this stage because i just have so much to prepare and so much to do uh with with media and with with the engineers simulators and stuff so um it's organizing all of that that's on my mind now so it's almost like i don't i feel like i don't have time to be nervous at the moment but i think that might change once i get to the track obviously because it has been a while and it's such a competitive series um so yeah we'll need to do well and and final question then. Um, I'm just curious what your impressions are of IndyCar. You said you've been to a couple of races and been in the sim. Like, what do you? What are your thoughts of this this series so far? I really like it I have so much. Like when you come to a race weekend, it's just such a different atmosphere. Um, like the paddock's very open. Uh, the fans get to see the cars, see the drivers, be really close to them, be like I don't know how to say, maybe like immersed. I think <laughs> in the in the experience much more. Um, and yeah, the racing is awesome. That's that's one side that I really like about it. Um, you get such close racing. Um, it's very hard here, but you know when you watch the races, they're super exciting. So yeah, that's that's the appeal I have for IndyCar. Um, and yeah, it's I think it's just an awesome series. Awesome. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Bobby. Congrats on the announcement. Looking Thank forward to uh, seeing your race. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Let's go. Oh, Marshall dropped his hand. Marshall, do you, do you have a question? Yeah, I just dropped it because I figured no need to keep it up while I'm talking, Davey. Oh, <laughs> I see how you work. Okay, go ahead, sir. Bob, let's open uh, with a couple for you. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you've got a great opportunity that a lot of free agents want to claim in this number 30 RLL Honda of yours. Mm -hmm. you know, all have been keen on Yuri for a while now. What are you hoping to see from him at Portland and at Laguna? And if he does well, does he have a legitimate chance among the others you're looking at to maybe land this seat next year? Well, first off, as, as you know, or as you suspect, um, uh, my friend, that, you know, we were talking to a number of drivers out there. Um, uh, and uh, I like probably like just about most of the teams, I suppose. Um, in terms of, uh, um, uh, you know, where Yuri is in, in that <clears throat> mix, I think it's, I, I think it first come for, you know, first things first. And that's, and that's, um, you know, let's go do the races. Let's see how they sort themselves out. Um, you know, uh, clearly, um, you know, we, we have an interest in Yuri just as we have an interest in others, but it's all about, let's just get through this. And then, um, and then, you know, go through the process. We still have some sponsors to sign, so there's still a lot of work to do. But, um, uh, but uh, you know, we're just glad we're able to be in a position to give Yuri this this chance. And, and who knows, somebody else may want him if if they see if he does as good as I think he can do. Um, but uh, first things first, and then after the after. After Labor Day, or after I shouldn't say Labor Day, after um, you know September fifteenth, we'll we'll see where everything falls out. Bob, tell me about young talent like Christian or Yuri here as well. Used to be, if we we're going to bring a young driver into IndyCar, pretty much the traditional path was going to be coming up through the American Open Wheel ladder, mm -hmm. spend some lights, show yourself. We're seeing more and more Callum Eilat's one, Alex Pelos, yep. and where it, it's F2. It could be some other series, but tell me about what you're seeing about young drivers like Yuri coming over here and Christian where you go, okay, you don't have that oval component, but they sure are training these kids in F2 to a really high level. 
or they can transfer almost, almost immediately. What are you seeing about this new dynamic? Because honestly, your team's one of the, the leaders uh, in showing this to the world. Yeah, well, I think, um, I mean, let's first thing, you know, um, I, I still believe that there's good Americans out there. I think Kyle Kirkwood is a prime example of that, um, uh, who's come up through the U.S. ranks and, and is showing great I mean, two race winner this year. Um, you know, on his day is really is really quite good. Um, so I don't think it, I don't think it's a you know, it's a, it's doom and gloom for, you know, the U.S. system. And I think certainly I think that, you know, road to Indy or Indy NX, NXT, uh, you know, that these are um, we're already seeing guys get out of Indy Lights cars and immediately be, you know, pretty competitive. So uh, which is good. Um, I will say, though, um, that uh, there are so many young guys uh, in Europe in Europe and in F2, um, you know, from all over the world racing there. I mean, if you look at the, the grid uh, in an F2 race, it's like a United Nations. Um, and, you know, the professionalism, the expectation, the demands, both on the track and off the track are such that these young guys like Christian, these young guys come over and they're pretty savvy uh, uh, on and off the track. And um, so, we, you know, I think it'd be foolish to, for us to not look in, into F2. And as you say, you've got Callum over here. You've got, you know, Palou was there. Uh, of course, uh, Pato was an F2. Um, you know, not, Christian, as I said, now Yuri. You know, I mean, there's a long list of guys that are already coming from Formula 2. And I, I expect there to be a lot more because the opportunities for them in Europe are so, so small that uh, these are good drivers and they just never get a real chance. So um, I suspect that in the future, there's you, you, as a team owner, you've got to look at, at formula two uh, as a, a prime um, training level to get to uh, IndyCar. Close with this Yuri for you, just looking at social media since the announcement I'm very happy that Bob and Mike Lanigan and Dave Letterman are of the mind that folks deserve a second chance. I can tell you that looking at social media after the announcement, there's a lot of folks here, a lot of IndyCar fans who aren't necessarily happy to hear this are asking, has he learned? Bobby said you've learned a lot, but would welcome hearing from you. Having gone through, made a mistake, one that would definitely alter one's life now that you spent a year of your life or so dealing with repercussions who are you how are you different tell me about this person indycar fans are going to get to meet this weekend in portland how is he different than the person maybe they read about a year ago though when everything sideways for you yeah uh so i basically after everything happened um last year um i asked my my team at the time high tech the to do some kind of like a course for for me to understand what's offensive and what's not, um, because I you know I made this huge mistake without knowing it's a, like such a big mistake. You know, I thought it was just a swear word that I was saying, um, and yeah, I wanted to know more about it first of all, um, just to you know, so so nothing like this can happen again because I don't know what else I don't know, you know, um, so. And then, yeah, uh, had a lot of time to reflect on uh, on who I disappointed. You know, I had so many, so many fans, so many people cheering for me, um, so many people that helped me through my career, and I just threw it all away. You know, um, because I wasn't, um, you know, I, before this, I, I I wasn't interested in learning about anything. All I cared about was racing. Um, so that's, I guess, why I thought the word that I said was a swear word and not way worse than it actually is um and yeah um since that i've uh, i've learned a lot um i took two sensitivity courses uh so one in the uk and um we decided with with reho here that it's good to do a refresher course as well um so that you know things might be a little bit different in the us it's a different company um and that's that's definitely helped as well um, just to get a different perspective on things. And uh, I've definitely learned more um, in the the RISE program that I just completed here. Um, so I feel like I have grown as a person. Um, but yeah, um, 
I, I am really, really grateful for Bobby for the second chance, and I completely understand all the all the outrage. Um, now that I understand what the word means, I, it's completely justifiable, and I am very sorry for everybody that I've hurt. Just spend more time with Bob each evening after uh, you're running at the barbecue there. Steaks or wine, Yuri. He'll have you all. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you, you Marsh. Thanks, Marshall. Uh, time for a few more. Uh, Alejandro Barbosa from Pit Lane Motor. Go ahead. Thanks, Dave. Uh, first of all, uh, for Yuri, uh, I'm glad to see you again in racing competition. And and I'm just looking forward to what what you if you've done in this in this uh, two races. Uh, my my question. My question goes on that way. Are you worried about uh, this about these two races after one year of non competing in any or anything uh, any single series? And what is your objective in these two races that you have? Um, I didn't quite. The connection was a little poor for me. Did I understand correctly that it was? Am I nervous for the two races and what yes. are my? I, yes, if you are, if you are worried about uh, these two races after one year of mm -hmm. non competing, mm -hmm. yeah, um, what will be your objective. So, I mean, to answer that question, I am doing everything I possibly can to be as ready as I could. And I know that once I start driving out the pit lane, I'm not going to be as comfortable as I am on any other race weekend. I know it's going to take a little bit of time to to catch up and, uh, you know, build confidence in the race car. Um, but yeah, um, I'm worried a little bit um, just because I haven't done it in so long. But to be honest, like, I think it's all going to go really well. Um, once I get confident, I'm not worried at all. Um, but it's just, yeah, it, it, I just need some laps, you know, with the car because, you know, I haven't driven at all, uh, for a long time and, uh, yeah, just, just need some laps, need to build the confidence up. And, um, as soon as I do that, I'm, I'm not worried at all. Um, I think the car should be quite good on both these circuits that I'm doing. So, um, yeah, not too worried. And speaking about the drivers that you will find in these two races there is some uh former uh teammates in formula two especially mm -hmm. marcus armstrong that is in Ch on chicanasi have mm -hmm. you have any conversation with him about uh about uh in the car uh have you recommended uh, to enter to in the car yeah well I've, I've actually talked talked a while because um so both two tests that I did for, for Rahal. Actually, he was there as well. So the Sebring test I did last year, he was with Dale Coyne, I believe, at the time. And then uh, he was at Barber as well. So yeah, I've had some some chats with him about the car and about everything, how he's like, he, he's loving the life here, you know. Um, and yeah, I had some good chats with him. And uh, yeah, he just found out, I guess, as well today that I'm, I'm doing the last couple of races. But uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've kept in touch with Marcus. And one question for Bobby. Uh, mm. Bobby, if if Dre uh, did a really good uh, performance in these two races, have you had any thought, any 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 thought uh, about uh, renewing a jury for a full time sitting in twenty twenty four? We well, I mean, as I said a little while ago, I mean, clearly we we're running Yuri because um, you know he he we feel in all the in all the all the reports we received and opinions by people we, we feel he could be very competitive. You know that will tell. I think it's I think it's a lot to expect for people to expect that you know he'll be right on the pace and you know for these first two races because it's like you said he's hasn't raced anything for over a year or maybe a year and a half. Uh, and it is a different world. Um, but, uh, you know, we saw enough from the test uh, that we felt it's, it's worth, you know, if he would, 
if he was going to really extend himself to to learn and to in effect atone for his mistake that we thought well then we should we should give him that chance and so that's where we're at right now we will you know we'll see um but uh, clearly his record in europe was such that he was one of the top guys and uh uh no different than uh callum no different than um as you said um marcus or or christian um you know, he's they're all from the same kind of school finishing school which formula two is to a large extent so um um yeah we'll see we'll just see okay sorry for the connection first of all and thank you very much and yeah good luck these two weekends for you it serves that second chance Thanks, Alejandro. Uh, let's take two more. Uh, Jeroen Demidoff from Champ Webb. Go ahead, Jeroen. Thanks, Dave. Um, Yuri, looking looking at the two tracks that you have ahead of you now, like Portland and Laguna Seca, I'm sure you've been watching some footage of the races there. What What is your impression of those two tracks? Uh, really cool. Um, yeah, Portland just looks like this cool, old school, you know, pretty high speed track. Um, yeah, it looks just like a really, really cool layout. And I think it's good for racing as well. You know, you got like two long straights, uh, one pretty much after the other. So um, I think all the races that I've seen there look really cool. And I think to do just one lap for qualifying also looks looks like a cool track. And uh, Laguna is going to be nice, uh, especially now that they repaved it. Um, you know, you're hearing different kind of numbers, but I think there were some cars running already and like three four seconds quicker so um i think laguna is anyway such a historic track um so it's cool to tick that off the list but uh, i think it'll be especially nice um because it's going to be a lot grippier this year than before um now of course in recent years a number of guys from f2 made the switch to indycar um and we spoke to a number of them i mean marcus armstrong called the indycar like wrestling an alligator um <laughs> and um uh, Christian Lunkard was much more like, well, it's almost, it's, it, you can really feel it's a Dallara. It, 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 there's a lot of commonalities with my F2 car. What's your impression been in, in the runs that you've had so far? Somewhere in between the two. So <laughs> let me put it this way. Um, it's similar in terms of downforce and power. I think maybe a little bit more on each. Uh, so it's a little bit quicker. It feels a bit quicker than F2. But I think the big difference is the the tires. Like the Pirellis, you really had to drive smoothly, uh, couldn't have any oversteer uh, and just had to be very careful with what you're doing. And I feel with the Firestones, you can just do anything. Um, you can throw the car around a lot, which which I really like. Um, so that's probably where the alligator term came in from Marcus. But uh, uh, but yeah, I think it's, just, it, it's similar in, in ways to F2 in terms of like uh, speed and cornering speed. But um, yeah, the driving style is is completely different. Mm. Hey, and now of course, I mean, you once were on the road to F one, um, given everything that has happened in the past year. Um, wh where are your F one ambitions? I mean, do you still harbor them in, in some way, or are you right now just like you know what America is where I want to focus on? Uh, to be honest, at the moment, I have no thoughts of F one at all. Um, mm. I really like it here in the states. Um, of you know. Come to a couple of IndyCar races now, uh, spent a bit of time here. So I'm really, really liking IndyCar and everything about it. Um, America, it's it's a very different environment to the F1 environment. And I'm just en enjoying it so much. I've, I've, I've forgotten about F1 a bit. So um, don't have any ambitions um, towards that at the moment. But it's, yeah, uh, trying to get a full-time drive uh, for next year. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. You got it, own. Let's uh, wrap it up with Ida Wood. Ida, go ahead. Thanks. Uh, first question to Bobby. Now, you mentioned earlier there was a need to get one or two sponsors still. How significant is this news in terms of the leader circle payments? Because I think this entry is currently 23rd when we're looking at like the full-time cars, and it's the top 22 that get the payouts. So right. is putting Yuri in part of a plan for that? Well, I mean, uh, this last weekend, we, we actually are in that top 22 group um remember one of chip's cars the fourth car and owner's points is not is not um 
uh, is not uh, eligible for leader circle. Um, so that opened up things. Having said that, uh, we're not breathing easier because uh, it is very close still. Um, I mean, we're going racing either way, but it would sure be nice to be part of the leader circle group. And, and that, that was an expectation that frankly, I, I took for granted, uh, this going into this year. And then, uh, clearly we, um, we struck, we've been struggling a little bit to, to get the points in order to do that. So Connor did a nice job for us, uh, and got us kind of back in the game, but there's two races left as you bring up, as you mentioned, and, we've got to really do a good job in those two races. And if it ends up not being in the leader's circle, will it definitely still be a full-time entry next year? Yeah. Even if oh, you yeah. can get those yes. on the other line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Cool. Uh, and to Yuri, a few quick questions. Uh, around this time last year, you said it was looking really difficult to get a race seat for 2023. Um, at what point during the off-season did you actually stop looking for a seat in F2 and start switching your focus focus to IndyCar? Uh, I never looked for a seat in F2 um, for, for this year. Um, so yeah, it was looking difficult um, just to get any like, you know, we we're looking more towards IndyCar. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it was it was looking pretty difficult for that. I ended up having a couple offers to do some like endurance racing, DTM and stuff like this full time this year. Um, but, you know, um, I'd rather, you know, uh, take a chance with IndyCar because the thing for me is, like, if I look at my myself long term, that's that's the series I want to be in. Um, you know, that's that's what I want to do. Um, I think once you sort of commit yourself to a program in GTs, endurance or something, you're kind of committed there and it's hard then to make the transition after. So um, I want to... You know, I'm I'm really grateful for Bobby for this opportunity. Um, because yeah, I wanna I wanna prove myself and I wanna I wanna stay on the grid here. Uh, and last year you were the third best qualifier in F2, but in terms of feature race points, only 12th. So like on the Sundays, if it was Sundays, um, losing a lot of points. I know high tech were bad at pit stops. You had that weird penalty at Monza where the stewards had to apologize. Um. With the way you kind of like lost the rhythm towards the end of the season and then having this huge break, were you able to do some kind of off-season work to kind of figure out what had gone wrong last year and how you could have applied it if you were back in a full-time race seat this season? Oh, definitely. I had like, a, you know, once everything sort of kicked off last year, I didn't have time to reflect. Uh, it was just one race after the other. Um, you know, it was pretty hectic to have to schedule at this point. So yeah, that obviously affected my performance as well. Um, but yeah, we had like a couple races still where that got away. I think Red Bull Ring, we should have definitely won. Um, then Monza, yeah, it was probably a podium without that uh, mistake from the stewards. And there was a couple good ones still. Um, but yeah, then off season, I well, the kind of I think there was like a two month gap to Abu Dhabi. I had a lot of time to reflect and yeah, sort of just try and. Um, yeah, because at, at this time I was really, you know, um, I was really struggling and stuff. And yeah, it, it, it wasn't a great time, um, but it was more, you know, it was more, I would say, I had time to reflect once the season was fully over after Abu Dhabi um, is when I was, you know, really took some time off, uh, disconnected. Um, and yeah, just spent some time with family and friends. And, and that's really helped me as well, um, you know just to sort of regroup, refocus and, um, and, you know, get serious again. And um, yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm in a much better place where I was um, last year. And I think I'm, I'm ready for this. And in addition to like sensitivity training and just building like your learning and understanding of this, now you've got a platform of being in one of the biggest racing series on the planet. And this focus is going to be on you because of what's happened. Are you going to use it to kind of spread this education yourself? Because it's a mistake you've learned from and you've got this opportunity to make sure others don't make the same mistake. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and I, I haven't made full plans of what I'm going to do exactly. But I, I do speaking when I was going through this program, 
uh, was Andrew McIntosh, is, who, who helped me with this, uh, is from the RISE program that I just completed. Yeah, he, he really mentioned that um, I should sort of spread my knowledge of what I've learned and stuff. And I really agree with him. Um, I haven't, I just completed the course. I haven't exactly thought of what I'm going to do. Um, but yeah, I think people have learned already because they've seen what I've done, um, you know, but I do want to spread what I've, what I've learned uh, from the sensitivity programs and uh, yeah, just be a model citizen from now on, um, you know, leave the past behind me and grow. Um, that's, that's my main thing. Awesome. Thanks for that. Yep. And good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Ida. Uh, I know it was a quick turnaround after the announcement. Everyone's busy, certainly this time of year. So uh, thank you all for uh, hopping on very quickly as we uh, look ahead to Portland coming up in just a few days. Yuri, thank you so much. Nice yeah. getting to know you. Yeah. Bobby, thank you. All right, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, quick reminder, uh, bitnow.com Grand Prix of Portland is Sunday. Coverage begins at 3 Eastern on NBC, Peacock, and the IndyCar Radio Network. Thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks.